Hi everyone, my name is Eamon Salim. Today I'm going to talk about the steel connections and we're going to talk in this lecture about uh, the design of moment and tension type of connection, design of faulted connections and welded connections. So this is just an introduction. For some parts I'm going to um, skip out because uh, I'm going to focus about um, the examples and how we can apply these uh, formulas in uh, real situations. So don't worry, just um, follow uh, what, what I'm going to focus on and anything that you don't understand um, is going to be cleared out later with the examples. So let's start. So this is some members in tension as you can, as you know from statics that when you apply some loads here, for example in this member or in this cantilever, you will have some, um, some tension in, in this member accordingly because, uh, because of the load here. Also here you have uh, some load here in this in this structure as as this uh, force actually pointing down to the wash of the gravity. You can actually see that there are um, these members actually subjected to tension forces. Also here you can actually from structure analysis or uh, st statics you can actually analyze which members subjected to uh, compression and which members actually subjected to tension. However, you can also uh, gain this with um, with uh, logical sequence like for example by having a lateral force pointing uh, this direction you will have this member in, in compression and this one because it's um, going to the other direction and rotating uh, to the other direction is going to be having a tension forces also um, this is the same way but in the opposite direction so Let's go to this bridge, the same thing as you have a load on the bridge, you will have some uh, members at the bottom having the tension forces. This is just uh, to remind you about the grade and the strength when you go with the grade 300, grade 3500. So it's actually going, the strength going uh, uh, up. And, and that's uh, gonna help you, for example, when you are specifying which um, grid are you gonna use in your uh, steel connections. So uh, let's let's move forward. This is um, the design uh, of members subject to axial tension. This is when you actually having uh, connections or a blade that actually subject to uh, a tension forces in axial direction. So uh, as we do in um, in all our uh, exam design we have a reduction factor and this reduction factor here is 0 0.9 by the capacity and the capacity of the member we actually calculated by uh, having the lesser of um, the AG multiplied by FY AG is actually um, the area gross of uh, of the member and this is actually or or we can uh, FY is uh, the limit state of yielding and we also have uh, we calculate 0 0.85 KT and which is uh, sometimes we're taking it as AG uh, multiplied by FU, which is the ultimate uh, tensile fraction. So this is uh, all right. Okay, so this is actually what's happening here when you have a deformation in the member, you know, yeah, it's. You, the, the members are deformed, deformed and this actually have to be um, calculated in your connection about how much uh, deformation is going to happen and what's going to happen is going to be a failure failure or and when we design a connection we actually want the failure to be not in the connection this is a, um, a very important point because if the failure happens in a connection that means the design is actually not um, not adequate. So the, the purpose of designing a connection is to maintain itself to the optimal load then the failure happens on the member itself because the member is actually holding the load. This is this is this is the main point. So if we have a connection fail before the member that means that we are actually um, didn't do well in a connection design or we over um, design uh, and members okay and that's that's what we want to uh, focus on about the main point is the connection 
must not be filled before uh, the member. All right. So uh, this is when we talk about Fy multiplied by Ag. Ag is the cross-sectional area. So as you can see, when we have a force like that, like a force in this direction, so you take a section which actually um, uh, perpendicular to uh, the, the force. So the force here in, in, this, in this section, you can see the force is actually in that direction. So we're going to have cut section like that, which is actually um, the section AA. And when we talk about AN, if we're going to take uh, AN, so it's going to have uh, some some void here. So AN is going to remove uh, part of it. So we're going to we're going to see examples later about um, how we can calculate this thing and how we actually going to apply these kind of steps in our uh, designing. So don't worry now, just um, follow what uh, this is just an introduction and everything gonna, gonna be clear in um, the design stage and with more examples. So this is types of stress and strain connections. You have some notches when you make um, uh, a welding you have some sometimes you have a void here and this is how um, how actually the load distributed out the, the stress actually distributed when you have a void you can see that the stress actually uh, accumulated uh, after the voids directly or you can see that here when you have um, uh, the force is actually uh, you have a welded here so the most part is gonna be at the end of your welding, this is the most critical part. That's that's why when you see like a failure in a in a welding with some types of this, is the failure gonna start from here, and then along to the center. All right. All right. So let's let's move forward and focus about just uh, specific bars. So stress constraints are uh, the opening. So uh, basically, the stress concentration around the opening does not affect the yield stress. So this is actually going um, uh, in in some formulas when you're calculating about the before yielding and at fall yielding. You can see uh, the difference that this, uh, the stress actually concentrate here in this in this area, and here you can find that the stress actually distributed along whole section. All right, so let's see. Okay, that's that's what I mean. When you have our uh, NT, we actually discuss about this is an axial tensile stress, and you can see when you calculate, we said that you have uh, to take the lesser of um, a g multiplied by f y, which we saw like this is this is the a gross, or we uh, and we also calculated 0.85 the factor of safety multiplied by kt if you the um the ultimate strength and n and uh, n which is uh, the next sectional area so what what we actually mean by the next sectional area is the a cross which is the area of the section perpendicular to the uh the force we're having so for example this is the force we're having now and this is actually um, the, the line perpendicular to it. So we're taking this section. So this section, we'll take it as a full. This is the A gross. And we, when we um, uh, take a void here, subtract the voids from, from the section. So it's going to be uh, the net area. So AN is A gross minus DH multiplied by T. So what is DH? DH actually the void, which which is here and the void is because we're having a bolt here so it's actually um, we're having um, some kinds of formula for example when you, when you are using a bolt like 20 diameters it's not gonna be the 20 you have a formula it's gonna be like 22 or uh, 23 so this is we're gonna discuss later about how to find the edge and how to apply this formula this is just for a basic knowledge Okay, so okay, this is gonna be explained later in uh, in the examples. Okay, now let's go to the KT. So 
KT factors actually a factor representing about how or uh, specifically about you know the um, the section. So for example, when you have a connection that is actually um, uniform distributed, or you have a uh, ha or having a uniform a uniform shape, so it's gonna be one. So KT is one. But however, when you have a non-uniform, so you can you're having uh, some kind of problem. So we need to reduce um, our our uh, capacity for uh, the tensile tensile or axial uh, tensile stress. So like for example here we're having you're having one because it's actually uniform. So that the connection is uniform and you can see that, that the structure is actually uniform. And it's actually the same thing. You have uh, you have the same type. It's, it's, it's just uh, identical. If you having a line here, it's gonna be identical from all sides. However, when you're having uh, some types of connection like this or like this, with one leg, so if if the one leg is actually equal legs you have here in the connection is going to be 0 0.85 however when you have um, non-equal uh, leg connection like this one it's going to be 0 0.75 so usually our connection actually one however we have sometimes we 0 0.85 or 0 0.75 depends but usually we're taking we make our connections as um, identical usually that's what what you're using Okay, as I said, all the examples are going to be explained later. So now let's move to the types of connection. Now we have connection and steel and construction. There are two types of connection, basically, or two categories. So whether it is flexible connection or rigid connection. The flexible connection is bent or symbol or shear connection. Basically, its connection doesn't take moments. So when we have a connection and we have an assumption that this connection is not going to take the moment in a design so this means it's a flexible connection it's just um it's, it's just our static principles when you say like this is a connection at bend and or this is um, a support as bend so this is, means that the support actually not taking moment even if it actually does so it's 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 simple as it is and the rigid connection is is the connection that's taking moment so we're gonna have or we're going to discuss about how we uh, see the difference between the flexible and the rigid connection. So let's move on. So the typical of uh, flexible connection, the angle seat, this is this is the type of the angle seat you can see here. So the main bar, this, this is called top top clad. This is the main, the main bar, this is a connection between the column and the beam. And you can see here that the connection actually uh, in the web, and it's the member. If the connection actually having you having a connection on a on a web, so this is um, a top click and this is actually flexible connection. And focus when I say the web because if the connection actually having uh, a fixation in the flange of the beam, that does mean this connection actually uh, taking the moment. So this is actually the top clip we can see here. We just have um, uh, two bolts here, which is uh, from the beam, the web to uh, the column. Bearing bats is another type of the connection. Also, you can see that we're actually having a connection in the web. Moving on, flexible end blade, also the connection in the web. Angle clip, there are so many types of connections, but it's also you can see that even with the angle clip, we're actually connecting the web of the beam to the column. We're not touching the flange. And this is this is the critical point. So when touching the flange, when we actually having uh, uh, the flange fixation to the column, that means this this connection are taking moment. It's no longer a regular connection. It's no longer a flexible connection. This this we uh, assume that this connection is gonna take moments in our design and it does so that's and you can see we're gonna have some real photos later that describe what is the difference when you have um, a fixed connection how 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 the fixed connection is going to, to show so now we're having a typical yeah flexible connection you can see here in the real photos that as we can see this this is in the web this is the web of uh, of the beam and this is called the flange so we're connecting the web of the beam 
to um, this is a secondary beam and this is a main beam to the web of the main beam so this is actually a connection between two webs and you can see no flange actually getting inside so that means this is um, a flexible connection and another, this is also the same thing another notice you can see that it's almost the sections are not bad and what I mean by big, you can uh, when we go to uh, fix connection, you can see when we fix um, uh, having a fixed connection between a column and the beam that the sections must be bigger to take the moment. So now let's go to uh, a typical rigid connections. Basically, all the world connections are um, uh, are are, um, are, are rigid connections that what uh, the main using however that doesn't mean this is 100 percent uh, correct because if we just make um, uh, an, a welding in the web as, as some type of this welding on the web so that means it's still um, a flexible connection however we usually use um, uh, the weld connection as um, a support so we're making a with a uh, bolted connection we're not making a, um, uh, a welded connection separately from the bolted connection so we add weld to um, the bolted connection and when we add that we actually uh, assume uh, as this connection is going to take moments so one type of, of uh, typical rigid connection is uh, the filled welded so we're actually having look we're actually having some types of fear that we are actually going to weld all this around so this all is welded so you can see this this going here and it's going to be bolted here and then all this this thing all is going to be welded and this is another uh, another fixed connection bolted in play and you can see the difference here you can see that we're actually connecting the the, the web and the flange of the beam to the column so uh, now you can see here a real photo when we having a rigid connection between um, the main beam and the column you can see that the section are actually bigger than when you have a, um, a flexible connection and that makes sense because we want the, this connection to take the moment from from the beam to uh, the column and for taking for for doing this thing it must have um, a higher strength to be able to do that or um, the, this if, if it's not then uh, the failure is going to be in the connection before for uh, the members and this is some other types of connection when you have between the two beams you have um, uh, the beam is longer so we, we add some bolted splice between here and there and sometimes we made the mix as I said before you have something bolted here and welded here and something like that you have yeah we're making uh, things but the main thing is actually all these things must be calculated so the connection here is actually stronger than the the, uh, the member itself so this is some types of connections between the column and the base and you can see it depends about our assumptions so if you assume that we want a bent connection that means all our um, connections are our voltage is going to be distributed along uh, the web so this is the web area of the column or we're going to have one line of uh, of voltage so this is it's not going to be distributed only one line this means also even if it's outside but it's also um, a flexible connection However, when we want to make a rigid connection and we want to distribute the moment, so um, this means you're going to have um, the bolted connection outside of or outside and inside. So it depends, but it must have um, some bolts outside of, uh, of the flange, as you can see here and you can see here in the real port. And there are types of fasteners that we are actually using bolts or welds and you have um, 
So, so the, the bolts, there are two types of bolts. There are commercial bolts and there are structural bolts. So uh, it depends about the grade. So what, what we mean about the grade? So when we think about the structure, for example, the grade 8.8, .8, it means the first eight, it, it means 800 megapascal, all right? And the second A, it means about the percentage or the ratio between the yield strength to ultimate stress. So you, you, when you say 8 by, by 8, it means around the 800. It does not mean 800 exact. It might mean, uh, it's actually mean uh, usually 830, but it depends. You have a schedule, but we mean by eight, it's around eight, 800. So it's 820, 830 or something. And we, we mean by four, it means 400 and something. So we're gonna have uh, uh, a look about the, the table and you can understand it later when we make a design. <clears throat> so uh, design of connection. So this is the bolts. This is what they call the nuts. This is the washer. This is the thread the shank and the bolt head. So what I want you to understand here, and which is more important, that you can see and have noticed that the area of the thread is actually not the same as the area of the shank. So this area, this area, if you take it across section, if you take it across section, uh, this is the head, the washer, the nut. So if you take a cross section about this, and you're gonna see that this one, this part, is actually having a smaller diameter than this part. And this is actually uh, making making uh, a point in a design. So if you want to be more um, conservative in your design, uh, more sure about the design is fine. So you're gonna assume that the area you're taking is, is all thread. Means you're taking a smaller area in a design to, to, make, uh, to make you like uh, having more space in your design or more. Um, more flexibility in the design. Okay, this is also very important. So do not mix different grades of bolts of the same size at a given type of connection. This is uh, this is very important. It makes sense because if you if you make a mix bolts, though the, the weaker one is gonna be failure and you're gonna have a failure area. So what is the point of having like uh, different grades in the same connection? So this is this this is this one should be like something logical when you design. All right. So we're gonna talk now about you know um, this is uh, the table what I'm talking about. Four point six means four hundred something. So four hundred megapascal here. This it's exact. Eight point eight is actually eight hundred thirty megapascal. And 8.8 TB, 8.8 TF. So what we want to know about what what is S, TF, and TB. So um, we we having a slide to discuss later about that. But just take it now as S is a snag tight, TF is tension friction, no slip, and TB is a tension bearing. So what we mean about that is when we say TF. And TB, it means that this this is actually a fault tensioning. It means that there is no slip. This means that connection is won't have any slip, no slip, no friction joint. However, when we have a snag tight, this means there is gonna be a, have a small uh, slip. In fact, both of them are gonna have slip. There is no thing, nothing called there is no slip. However, um, the one with the snug tight is going to have a slip earlier than the one with the tension uh, or fault tensioning bars. And, and both of them are actually going to have the same, the, the same, uh, the same magnitude and going to be able to hold uh, the connection till failure. So this is not actually a part of uh, the strength. So they, they have the same strength. Like for example, if I'm using 8.8 slash S, it doesn't mean that the 8.8 .8 TB is going to be stronger. They have the same strength, 830, 830. It's going to be fairly at the same, the same point. But this means that um, the snack try is will having um, a slab earlier than the fault tensioning part. And this is this is what I mean by it. like 
when you're having like this snark tight and fault tension now we're having this is um for 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 this one is actually the fault tension you can see that the slab this is the slab in millimeter that the one which is bolted is gonna have a slip later like in approximately 400 uh uh no it's uh 48 kilonewton so after 48 kilonewton like the slab is gonna start and then it's gonna become com complete like uh, normal and the slip in the snack tire is gonna be ever like in 20 it's gonna be having uh the, the slab and then it's gonna complete last normal so both of them gonna have the same point of failure but one of them will have a uh, slab earlier than the other however they both are uh, working fine so uh let's see now what we have um about the uh, apply so when we say about the df all oh, is not okay uh the df gonna be discussed later about how you calculate the df but now uh, you're having the edge distance. This is the edge distance. What we mean the edge distance is the distance from the last uh, bolt, from the last bolt to the edge. This is the edge distance. And the bench distance, actually the distance between the two bolts. All right. Um, we're going we're gonna to discuss this later about how you're going to calculate or how you're going to use which one of this in your design is basically you have... Um, them depends about if using standard or sometimes of that so the minimum batch is 2.5 df so uh this is or uh 15 tb tb is that um uh the thickness of the blade so and df is diameter of the fastener diameter of the fastener actually depends uh if you're using m20 like for example here this is m20 so it means 20 diameter so the df here is 20 all right However, uh, when using, uh, for example, uh, on the TV, as we say, so here we're saying the minimum bitch, the minimum distance between the two balls of M20 is going to be 2.5, 2.5 DF, which is uh, the 20, or, and the maximum going to be the lesser of 15 TB. TB is the thickness of the blade that we're using, or the 200. So uh, don't focus now about the calculations. Um, I'm gonna discuss all that in examples, with many examples, and everything is gonna be clear. So uh, now we're having now uh, when we're talking about uh, the DH. So uh, the DF is the diameter of the fastener, which is the diameter of the bolt. However, what the DH is when you have it's it's the void. Now, if you go back when you say the section, we're having a section. Uh, section A for example and then you have a void for, for the fastener or for the bolt then this void actually if we have M20 it's not gonna be at 20, 20 millimeters it's gonna be more than 20 so basically might be 22 or 24 or 23 so it depends about which type of um, of uh, bolts are you using so if you're using standard type and um, uh, and you're having um, the standard type, so it's gonna be, and you, your your uh, your type of bolt is M20, for example, which is less than 24. So the DF is gonna be 22. However, if you're having, for example, M30, so you get the DF is gonna be uh, 33. So it depends about which type you are using. If you're using standard, so the KS is gonna be one, and the DF is gonna be depends about it is. Um, bigger or lesser than 24. So uh, now we're saying about the voltage and design capacity of single bolt. So uh, basically we have bolts in tension, bolts in shear, uh, bearing and tearing, uh, and combined tension and shear. And we have also serviceability limits about to check, to check the serviceability. Um, and this actually doesn't mean that it's going to be having a failure, but it's checking for a long term. And you have bolts and shear and bolts in combined and tension or shear. All right. So um, this is actually um, any, I'm, I'm going to skip any uh, examples because uh, I'll put them later on. So uh, let's see now here. Here you can see that you can actually get the area. For example, if I said uh, I'm going to use M20 or M24. 
the M24 is having a tensile stress area of 300, 353 and uh, and it's having for example a shirt area threat included is actually going to have 300 338 all right so uh, as I said this is actually when, uh, when you actually having um, more conservative so when when you focus on a more conservative design you want to have you want to have a lesser area and you you gonna have um, you're gonna use the threat area and, and this is what you're gonna use for example for m20 you might use um, in uh, 235 or 225 it depends if you want to be more uh, conservative just use 225 and see what basically what goes okay so um, in examples I'm gonna skip them for later all right so what we are actually meaning by uh, the shear shear blend so the shear blends I see basically is the blame between our plates so for example we're having a bolt here and we're having two plates here all right so this is blend so basically when you have three blades for example like here you're gonna have two blades if you have four four plates so you can have three blades uh, three um, shear, uh, shear plants so it's basically the number of plates minus one is gonna be your uh, shear plan uh, however what we are focusing here is you can see that when we design we take the area about every or each how many how many uh, bolts we're having and which area are we using for for example here I can see that all right this this plate or this bolt having an nx equal to one nx means the area of um, this is not the area of the of the third this is the area in, in the in the first part so the first part of the bolt so if as you can see that the plane is here so we're, we're talking about this type of area however if we want to make it like um, more conservative we can assume that I'm not gonna use this area I'm gonna use the thread area and gonna assume like this situation this is an assumption that all right the, the shear blades actually not in um, uh, it's actually located in the thread area all right so basically what uh, many designers are, are, are doing instead of going into like which uh, the, the, the shear plane is going to happen in the inside the ball so we can make an assumption that all right I'm gonna take all the shear planes to be in the thread uh, excluded area thread included area sorry all right okay so uh, there are factor also we're gonna use called um, uh, the length factor for lab connection. The length factor actually simply it's the distance between the first and the last bolt. This is distance. The, the lab length is the distance between the first and the last wire, the last bolt of the of the connection, and that's it. All right, this is example okay so uh, bolted connections by and bearing so basically when you have an axial axial tension you're gonna have bearing and tearing and the tearing the tearing is, is something like that when when you have like some part of the ply is going to be out so uh, with with the bolt this is however when you have a, a, a bearing failure the, the bolt hole is going to be expanded and this is, uh, as I mentioned before the edge distance is the distance from, from the last uh, bolt near the edge till uh, the end of, of the plier here's some examples all right Okay. 
All right, now we'll talk about the welded connection. So as you can see, the most common weld type is a fillet welded. And we do that because it's simple and um, the, actually the fall penetration bat welded is actually more strong, more stronger than um, the felt weld and it has more strength. Uh, however, it's very hard to do it inside and that's, that's why we're using felt weld. We, um, it's, it's basically when using a full penetration bat weld, the welding is actually much more accurate and we have um, more um, uh, we're having um, more reliability on um, the, the welding. However, uh, it's as I said, it's very hard to do it um, inside the location so we basically use this type of, um, of welding uh, when uh, when it is outside and we bring we bring it inside however the most common common weld type is the felt welded but it has to be um, some experienced welder very experienced welder to do this type of welding but it's the most common so uh, let's go to the felt weld so basically no edge preparation required most common uh, for leg size less than what, 10 millimeters. So this is actually um, some general information about when we use felt welds. Straight bars not direct, con concentration are often present, uh, susceptible to fatigue failure. And the belt weld it has minimal disruption of stress bath, this is stress bath. Fall penetration will achieve the capacity of the burnt material. So it's actually fall penetration, which when you make a full uh, weld here for the, no voids. So you have more strength than actually the regular material of the, the member itself. Requires extensive edges, edge treatment. So it has to do some treatment. This is, as I said before, the main reason or the main difference why we're using um, the felt welds more than the bat, bat welds because it's the bat welds is very hard to do um, inside. So, uh, okay. So basically, we usually um, refer to the distance, this distance from here, when you have two light, it's called the trot thickness and we usually take it as equal so we take sometimes we, we take a difference but we usually take it as equal leg with equal leg uh, however you can actually have uh, in the code you have description about if you want to use a different a different uh, size for for the legs so what uh, the nominal tensile strength we refer to uh, 410, we say E41 when using a weld. 400, uh, eight, uh, 480 megapascal, we're using E48. So this is actually uh, how we refer to the weld uh, strength. And you have two types of, um, of weld. You have uh, an SB type or a GB type. And we say uh, the SB, we're using uh, a factor of safety. Of 0 0.8 so it's actually uh, we more accurate so we're reducing only 0 point uh, 20 percent and for the GB um, we will be using uh, 40 percent and TT is a throat thickness which is the thickness here for the uh, for the leg when you have uh, two leg sides and KR is the reduction factor for lab uh, connection and KR basically is about um, the distance of um, of the connection of the welds. So, with the example, you're gonna have like for example, if you have a T connection, so uh, the the KR you're gonna you're gonna calculate like this line, that line, so all um, the surrounding area of the T, and then you're gonna have for example 1,400 millimeters, and you can see uh, which which area or which category to calculate the KR from. Okay, this is an example. 
Okay, for the full penetration batch wells, we don't do analysis. As I said here before, we don't do analysis for this type of, uh, of batch wells. And the reason is very simple, because it's, it's stronger than the material of the member itself. And the design capacity for the first wells is taken is calculated. Okay, we, you can actually calculate when you have some voice in the batch wells, but we usually don't do it. If we're doing uh, this thing in... Uh, uh, outside of, of, of the building, so we usually uh, make a uh, complete fault penetration bad well. Okay. All right, that's it for um, uh, lectures. Lecture one for the introduction about uh, the welding the welding connections and uh, the bolted connections. This is, as I said, it's just um, an introduction about the, the course. You don't have to be stressed out. The examples are going to clarify all the elements and how to calculate each, um, each one and what is what we actually mean by uh, tension or uh, an axial tension forces, what we actually mean by bearing and tearing, what we actually mean by um, uh, the stress uh, and uh, the surface ability limits and all this kind of stuff is going to be very clear with the, the examples that we're taking. Um, I prepared my examples for you, so uh, don't um, don't panic now. It's gonna be all fine. It's gonna be all fine with the examples. All right, thank you.